This is Charter Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We're in the San Gabriel Valley today. We are joined by Mike Antonovich. He is a member of the Board of Supervisors in Los Angeles County, also a candidate for the California State Senate. I must ask you, sir, why after 35 years on the Board of Supervisors have you decided to make a run for the California State Senate? Well, there are many issues that we deal with at the county level that the state has a great responsibility and could assist in reforming the laws that make it so difficult for local officials. One is on mental health. One of our homeless mm. problems is that we have many, many who are homeless right. but mentally ill, and yet the state laws preclude them from having the required medical treatment necessary to get them back on their feet and become normal citizens. Those laws have to be changed, mental health. We also have a crime problem with Proposition 47 uh, and AB 109. Uh, AB 109's has sent to uh, our county jails over 48,000 uh, prisoners who should be going to state prison and coming to the county jails. Uh, let, me, let me ask you, if I may, about AB 109 and Prop 47. We'll start with AB 109. There's no question that AB 109 prison realignment was revolutionary uh, when you consider how we incarcerate in California. We consider that the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that our state prisons were cruel and unusual. And so what happens, the governor uh, ha pushes through what we know as AB 109. And so while frustration is understandable, what could have been done? What could have done, the governor had the ability and had been doing it with some cases of having the prisoners uh, assign out of state to re receive their sentence instead of sending them to the 58 counties who were not prepared to right. have these men and women who do not have the, let's say, the state was being sued because the government said they were not caring for right. the prison with the facilities that they required it to be in a state penitentiary. Right. Now, the counties did not have those same facilities that the state was sued for, and we're having to pay, play catch up. And, and we are in three counties in Northern California are being sued today because they don't have the facilities that they're supposed to have. Overcrowded. Overcrowded. Which and, is why the state got sued initially. Right, right, right. But the point is the state penitentiaries, as a, an analogy, are a five-star hotel. The county jails are like a motel because right. they're only for people who are going through the judicial process or serving one year or, or less. And that begs the question, under AB 109, with enhancements and other additions to sentences, folks can serve time in county jail three, five, 10, 15 years. Right now we have 543 serving time of five years or more one person with 42 year prison sentence. So how do you manage that when you're a motel? You know, motels don't have restaurants. <laughs> Jail, jails don't have the facilities that are intended for long-term incarceration. It impacts the delivery, healthcare delivery, for example. Mm -hmm. It does impact the local counties who have to come up with the resources to accommodate. And it's a, it's a catch-22, right. it's, it's very difficult to resolve. And it's a problem that the state created. You know, we had, I know, two doctors in the state uh, penitentiary system, medical doctors, who because of malpractice were not allowed to practice medicine anymore on inmates, so they're delivering mail and it's in the uh, storage with the files in the storage rooms, but receiving the full salary of a medical doctor. Those civil service laws have to be changed, but they can't deliver medical services because of malpractice, they should be fired. At the same time, we now have a cross current, and that cross current, as you mentioned, Prop 47. So what Prop 47 did, passed by the voters this time, not by the legislature, it reclassified certain offenses from felonies to misdemeanors. And so what we have seen is that both prison and jail populations are dropping because fewer folks are being arrested and or charged. And so has that helped, in a perverse way, the pressure on both the county jails and the state prison system? It has created a problem in that of nearly 50% of those who have been arrested on Prop 47 charges have been rearrested a number of times. So, well, so we, it's like a pressure, marriage though. Recidivism, definitely we should discuss, yeah. but what about the pressure on the pr prisons and jails? 
Is it easier? I mean, I know that may be a tricky term to, dis to discuss, but at some level, is it easier now that we have fewer people being arrested and not as many going into the system? It's not easier because we have people who are coming into our county jails who have serious crimes that they have committed in the past. It's only the last arrest right. you speak that, the truth. That, that has accounts for their being in the county jail. And I think our viewers should understand what you're describing is under Prop 47, the judge can only consider the crime for which the person is being charged at that time. So, so we have people committing murder and rape who should have been in a state penitentiary and not back on the streets and in the community. We've even had people commit murder and rape wearing their electronic anklet so, because that doesn't immobilize any vital organs. It doesn't prevent them from creating future crimes. It doesn't create a, a freeze on them where they can't leave their home. They're free to do whatever they want wearing that device or not, and so that's the problem. It begs the question, every bill, whether passed by the voters or by the legislature, can go through revision. And if you are in Sacramento, you may be part of that solution. Uh, one of your colleagues, sort of, Jim McDonald, LA County Sheriff, he has suggested that maybe we fix Prop 47 by increasing penalties for repeat misdemeanors. Absolutely. Is that something that you'd like to consider? Yes, and also those arrested for drugs. In the old days, the judge would say, you will go to rehab, right. and if you fail to go to rehab, you will go back to jail. Right. Today, with 487, the judge says you will go to rehab, and if you do refuse to go to rehab, the judge has no power to put you back in jail. And, that has to be changed. But sir, I want to delve more deeply into that very issue. As you know, in the pre-Prop 47 world, what we saw is these drug possession offenses were classified as wobblers. So the prosecutor could say to the charged, if you go to drug court, if you go to a drug program, we'll charge it as a misdemeanor, not a felony, you won't have it on your record. Now, because all drug possession offenses, relatively speaking, are misdemeanors, there isn't that stick. Can we effectuate change on that front? That law can be changed and it needs to be changed. Right now we have a spike in crime in our communities. There has been a crime increase and again, it's because of this 109 and Prop 47. But do we know that for sure? Because there's been a spike in crime nationwide, not just in California. So I want to get a sense, is it too early to really make that determination? When the crime is being committed by those who are products of 109 or Prop 47, yes, you can relate it to that because had that law not been in, in effect, they would still be in jail. So what do we do? under this new regime. The voters spoke. You know, AB 109 is one thing. You can blame the governor, the legislature. Right, right. Prop 47 passed by the voters, I think 55% of the vote. The voters would support a change. Mm. The voters would support a change because they see the consequences. What was told about 47 is not what actually is occurring under 47. So, presuming you uh, go to Sacramento, would you be part of a coalition to fix Prop 47 or repeal Prop 47? We need to repeal those provisions of 47 that are creating a, a burden upon the communities, upon the law abiding. And we need to ensure that those people who are arrested for drugs are going to get the rehabilitation. If they don't, then they have to stay in jail. His name is Mike Antonovich. He is a member of the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors, also a candidate for the California State Senate. That election will be held the primary at least in June 2016. My name is Brad Pomerantz, and this is Charter Local Edition.